Hey guys, it's Pelican here and I'd just like to thank each and every one of you for a thousand subs. I never thought I'd been able to make it this far. So to commemorate this milestone, I've decided to make a little Q&A video. And without further ado, let's get to the questions. Alright, so the first question is, what led me to play Maxsorg and which patch did I start playing it? So I started playing Maxsorg during the Homestead patch, which is in February last year. And there are quite a few reasons for it. So I only joined the game a few months a few months before the patch, and back then I was playing a stem DK block tank. So since Homestead greatly nerfed uh, blocking, along with some other things that affected my tank's effectiveness, I decided to make another character that can kill others. Since I was a bit tired of tanking, and I decided on Max Sock because back then it was the strongest range class to play and I still think it is and I wanted a range class because I believe my high ping won't allow me to play a melee class effectively so this brings me to the next question which is have I tried non-CP PvP and will I be making a non-CP max sort build for battlegrounds and zero deal so I've always played in non-CP PvP until about a month or so after the Morrowind patch because back then I was still low CP and I most likely won't be going back to non-CP because it's just so much easier to play solo in CP as you have so much more sustain and survivability and it's much more difficult to sustain and survive in non-CP Regarding non-CP max sort builds I would run less in pen pieces and more well fitted and also run more sustained because it is much easier to kill in non CP and you don't need a lot of damage there. So the next question is how do I play with such a high ping? So I always have a very high ping when playing ESO, it never goes below uh, 250, that's because of my location in Singapore. but. Uh, I guess I'm just used to having such a high ping and I think as long as my FPS is high enough and my ping doesn't go above 300, I will still be able to play quite well. So for the next question is uh, how do I get good at solo PvP? So I haven't always been a solo player, in fact uh, I started playing as in a large raid groups or pickup groups and I've even been a raid leader once myself. but. Uh, Due to my time zone, which is about 13 hours ahead of Eastern Time, I often can't find much people to play with, and it's usually just me and a couple of friends playing in small man groups. So eventually I found myself playing solo, and I decided to stick with it. So for any new PvPers out there who are hoping to get into solo play, uh, I highly recommend playing in larger groups first in order to get familiar with the class. And then uh, after you are familiar with the class, you can move on to smaller groups uh, playing in outnumbered situations. And eventually, uh, once you are pretty comfortable with your class, you can start uh, trying solo. But I think the most important part about solo PvP is perseverance. Like, there were so many times that I just felt like giving up solo play uh, completely. But uh, I decided not to. And I think that's really the most uh, important factor of playing solo PvP. You will feel like giving out in a lot of points and it's important to be able to persevere through uh, those hard times. For the next question is what are my opinions on Daedric Minefield instead of Boundless Storm? So the reason I prefer Boundless Storm over Daedric Minefield is because it gives me more resistance and that will really help since I only run Hardened Ward. And it also gives me a lot of uh, mobility. The major expedition is really good when paired with streak. And the damage over time is also very good. It can pull night blades out of stealth. It also does quite a bit of damage. And it can also proc implosion. Uh, as for Daedric Minefield, I think if you are not if you prefer a less mobile playstyle and you prefer to maybe stay in one spot, you can use it. It's a really good area denial weapon because enemies that enter it just take so much damage. In fact, you can even one shot them with just mines. And I think uh, 
the high cost is probably one of the reasons I'm not running it. So next patch, uh, this Daedric Minefield is getting its cost reduced by 1k. So I think a lot, a lot more people will start using it. But I still won't be using it because of the lack of a uh, bar space. So next up, do you prefer having Harness Magicka or Rapid Regeneration? So personally, I prefer having Regeneration or any other heal over time. But I think Harness Magicka is much stronger as it gives you so much more sustain and it also gives you an additional damage shield which uh, gives you a very a much larger attack window on your enemies. But the reason I have this personal preference for heal over times is because back then I had a lot of trouble with uh, dizzying swing builds as well as the Viper Tremor skill meta back then. And having Harness Magicka just isn't helping me in those situations. So now I no longer have any trouble with uh, dizzying swing builds and the Viper Tremor skill meta has died long ago. But uh, since I'm already so used to running heal over time, I decided to stick with it. And But I highly recommend uh, running Harness Magicka for any uh, max socks that are just starting out. It's so much more easier to use and it's much more reliable. So for the next question, what do you think about the impregnable armor set in PvP? I think it is the strongest 5 piece uh, defense set for PvP because it gives you 2.5k crit resistance which is about 37% less damage taken from critical hits. And as you know, um, there's no limit to how much crit resist you have and if you have enough crit resist, you can actually take less damage from critical hits than compared to a normal hits. So since most of the damage you take in PvP if you are not using damage shields is critical hits, uh, this is most definitely the best set to use. However, I think in a non-CP, sets like Fortified Brass or Armor Master will be better because you will be taking less critical damage there as a uh, due to the lack of CP which gives more critical damage and higher critical chance. But uh, if you are, you should still probably run 7 in pen if you are a melee build in non-CP, you just don't need uh, any more crit resistance than that. So for the next question, uh, what add-ons do you use for PvP? So I use the following add-ons for PvP. And basically, uh, I use advanced UI to keep track of all my buffs seen here as well as any other debuffs that my enemy have and I use Shrenda to keep track of more specific buffs which I think are more crucial as well as uh, any weapon damage or item set procs that I have but uh, if you are already using Shrenda there's no need for AUI because it has the same features and the only reason I'm using AUI is because I'm more used to it and I decided to stick with it I'm also using Omni stats to keep track of my weapon damage and spell damage so I know when's the right time to burst. And I use Azura to configure my vanilla interface so I can use it to move stuff like my resource bars around. I'm also using Assist Rapid Riding. It basically lets you it basically auto equips a rapid maneuver for you once you get on your mount and it also auto de-equips it for you. So it's a really good add-on to use and it saves me a lot of time. So for the last question, what are the sets and jewelry traits that you are going to run for Max Sword next patch? So I've been thinking really hard about this recently and I think I've decided to run front bar spinners both bar uh, amber plasm, back bar maelstrom restro and two piece blood spawn for the next patch and I won't be using uh, a destro stuff anymore I'll be using a two hand to burst because of the changes to rune prison which basically lets you it basically adds an, a 9k unavoidable damage to your burst so I think there's no reason to use uh, master stuff anymore and I decided to go two hand because uh, it gives you forward momentum which is a snare remover and I think and my number one killer on max sock right now is uh, immobilizations and snares 
so I think this will really help me greatly and I think it's worth going two hand also if also two hand has uh, more damage than than Destro and it also gives you a lot of stamina recovery when you kill someone on it as for jewelry traits I'm still going to stick with Arcane because I think uh, having more max magicka for a max sword is still very important and I probably won't be any using any of the new uh, jewelry traits for max sword next patch but I've been considering running uh, some of the speed traits for my stem turn or my stem sword so that's all for the Q&A once again thank you so much for a thousand subscribers if you have any more questions feel free to ask me in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video.